pagué. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Adirene di kagi. Welcome everybody, good morning, good afternoon, good night, good evening, whatever the time is in your location, God bless you. You are welcome to Power and Grace Evangelistic Ministries. It is well with you and your family in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, God bless you. And as you are coming in, can we share please, invite other people to join us, host watch parties. God bless you. Just invite people. Just keep inviting people. Share to groups. Share to pages. Good evening. Oh, Steph, McKnight. God bless you. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It is well with you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Igwe, only you are God. Igwe, Igwe, only you are God. He is the only true God. Only Him is God. He reigns in all the earth. Yes, you reign. Watch all the way from Arkansas. You are welcome. Wherever you are watching from, God is everywhere. May the Lord bless you and favor you in that land in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Igwe, Igwe, only you are God. Igwe, Igwe, only you are God. Only you are God. Hallelujah. What a father we have in him. He's a mighty, mighty God. He calls. He's always available when we call him. Hallelujah. What a father we have in him. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. Always available when we call him. Hallelujah. Wow. Igwe, Igwe, only you are God. Igwe, Igwe, only you are God. 
Whenever we call him, he answers us. What a mighty God he is. What a loving father he is. Oh, Jesus. He is an incredible God. An incredible God. An incredible God. Oh, my father. You are an incredible God. Incredible God, you are incredible God. Hey, Welcome everybody. Repakute likatos in the yerebos. And it's time we call him, he answers. What a mighty God, an incredible God. An awesome, awesome God. Hey, Rabagades in the yerebos. Hey, you are an incredible God, incredible God. Yeah. No matter what the situation is, He is an incredible God. He is an incredible God. Labragados Carmel. Just take a minute to worship Him. Just take a minute to appreciate Him. Just take a minute to thank Him. Oh, just bless His name for your life. For his grace, for his mercies, for his goodness. God bless all of you. You are all welcome in Jesus' name. You are an incredible God. Hi, yeah, yeah. Incredible God. You are an incredible God. Men may fail. Men may disappoint. But he is the only true God. That will never fail or disappoint his own. Hey, he is the impossibility specialist. What is impossible with man, with doctors, with the government, with anything is possible with him. He is the impossibility specialist. Rabagados can be rabash. You made the earth your footstool. An incredible God. La bragados kende yadabash. Maseke yekete rabagados in the lagadabash. Oh, makatarabos kende yadabash. Oh, Jesus, we worship your name. We worship you. Hey, marabasike yadabos yadabash. La katatatatat in the yadabos yadabash. Oh, Jesus, we worship you. Lord, we bless you. We honor you. We glorify your name. You are seated in heaven. Incredible God. Incredible God. Incredible God. Incredible God. Incredible God. Labragados kende yarabash. Repasike labos kende yarabash. You made the earth your footstool. Incredible God. Oh, we bow before your God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Rabagada balinga de 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 Oh, ribaga dos kendele bosi kayarabash. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 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 Hallelujah. We bless your majesty. We worship you, Lord. In the beauty of your holiness. In the beauty of your holy name. In the beauty of your holy name, in the beauty of your holy name, la braga dos kende yarabash, yekerebo sinda la garaba sente yarabosia. Hallelujah, Lord, we bless you, we bless you, incredible God, we bless you, we honor you, we adore you, we exalt you. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. What an awesome, awesome God He is. Incredible God, we worship you. Rabas Kondo Rogodosi Kayarabash. Yes, Lord Jesus. 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 Incredible God, we worship you. We adore you. We exalt you. We honor you. Rabagadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadadad
Oh, rika la katala dos kendere de bos kendere bash. Oh, rika ta 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 ta. Oh, rika tala dos kendere de bos yara baba bash. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, ripa katala bos kendere de bos. Raba da 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 lende yere bos yara ba. You are an incredible God. Oh, we worship you. Masoko to rika la dos yara bas. You are incredible God. We just bless you. We just honor you. We just worship you. You are worthy to be praised and adored. May your name be praised, Father. May your name be glorified. We thank you for this uh, 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 program, this broadcast tonight. Father, glorify your name. Glorify your name. Glorify your name in our midst, oh God. Glorify your name, Jesus. Glorify your name, Adonai. Glorify your name, ancient of days. Glorify your name, King of glory. Glorify your name, Lion of the tribe of Judah. Glorify your name, mighty God. Glorify your name, ancient of days. Lord, we just bless you. We just bless you. We just bless you. We just honor you, Lord. Hallelujah. Begin to say thank you for the gift of life. Begin to appreciate you for the gift of life. Say, Lord, thank you for the gift of life. Thank you, Yahweh, for the gift of life. Oh, thank you for the gift of life. Begin to thank you for the gift of life. Say thank you, Jesus, for the gift of life. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Oh, we worship you, Yahweh. We worship you, Adonai. You are the incredible God. You are the incredible God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for life. Many are in the grave today. Many are battling for, for their life. Many are on oxygen. Even newborn babies today are fighting for their lives. But you are here. You are still alive. So celebrate God for the gift of life. Don't worry about your situation. Don't worry about what you are going through. There is a God in Israel. There is a God in heaven that is able to do and undo. He is able to change that situation. So don't worry about that situation. Just forget about yourself. Forget about that situation. Lift up your hands to heaven and begin to worship him. And begin to appreciate him. And begin to thank him. And begin to bless his name. And begin to uh, honor him. Begin to thank him for your husband. Even if you are single, thank him for your husband that is coming. <laughs> Even if you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, trust him for that one that is coming. Oh, my shakayaraba sendere. Iba gadarendele Oh, my father, my father. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless you. You are our Jesus forever. We bless you. You are a wonderful God. You are a wonderful God. Hallelujah. Somebody celebrate Jesus. 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 He is our Jesus today. He's our Jesus tomorrow. He's our Jesus forever. And he is a wonderful, wonderful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Makarabas in the Arabas. We just can't stop praising him. We just can't stop thanking him. He is the one that gave, gave us the air that we breathe. Hallelujah. Somebody just share this broadcast. Just share this broadcast and invite others to join us. Host watch parties. Share to groups. Hallelujah. Rabason Tori Galagados Yarabas. Oh, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We will shout hallelujah. We will worship you. We will praise you. You are Lord our God. You are Lord our strong tower. Who is like you? Who can be compared with you? Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have worship. Amen and amen and amen glory to god there is power in your worship there is power in your worship 
There is power in your worship. There is power in your worship. There is power in your worship. You are, there is power in our worship. Praise the Lord. The Bible says so. Hallelujah. Last week, God began to talk to me about Abraham. Actually, myself and my team, we are, we are studying Abraham. And um, ah, you are trusting him for your future husband. Let me see the person that says so. Your husband is coming. Ah, don't worry, he will come. Just connect. Just connect to this ministry. Many husbands are on the way already. Praise the Lord. Many have already married. Many will still get married. Your husband will locate you in the name of Jesus. Just connect to God and connect to the ministry. And your life will never be the same again. Hallelujah. So we are going to be treating what we call Abraham series. Abraham series. And I think it was last week, God was, I was, God was laying it in my heart to do, to treat Abraham series. And I just kind of let it go. And this morning again, I was meditating. I was just asking the Holy Ghost, hmm, what am I going to teach tonight? Because I am a woman led by God. I like to come here and do what he wants me to do, not what I want to do. And then he had, and I heard him say, Abraham series. So the Holy Ghost reminded me about can you hear me is the music too loud because i want you guys to hear me can you hear me loud and clear hallelujah so let me see if i can be using this to see your comments praise the lord your husband is coming don't worry that is for sure not only husband your doors will be opened as long as you love god and you connect to god and you connect to this ministry and you are obedient to his word. You are 100% faithful. God will rewrite the story of your life. God has used this ministry to change so many lives. Transform so many lives. People came here single. They are married. People came here jobless. Now they have a job. Some come here without any documents. Now they are legally settled in, what, in their countries. And so I want you to know that there is power in the name of God. And, 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 and God is just too faithful to fail. The word of God says that he will not disappoint those that put their trust in him. You know, he will not disappoint those that put their confidence in him. I need you guys to share this broadcast. I need you to host watch parties. I need you to invite people to come and join us. They will be blessed. Hallelujah. Their lives will be transformed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless all of you. God bless you, whatever you are trusting and believing God for, I believe God with you, that he will grant it unto you in the name of Jesus. And I begin to prophesy upon your life as a mouthpiece of heaven, that the Lord, that the Lord of hosts will meet you at the points of your needs in the name of Jesus. We are going to see, read up, we want to study the life of Abraham. Because the Bible says Abraham was blessed, so, so blessed. What is the secret of Abraham's blessings? Why was he blessed so much? And don't you desire Abraham? You know, we sing this song, Abraham, blessings are mine. Many people are singing this song, but there is no symptom or even sign of Abraham's blessings in their lives. Praise the Lord. So why is it so? What exactly did Abraham do? do? What did he do that he was so blessed? Because sometimes we just miss it. Oh, thank you for sharing. God bless you. We miss it. We miss it. We miss it a lot. But we want to know the secret of success. We want to be blessed like Abraham. God turned the life of Abraham like a, with speed. He turned it, not really with speed, shall In some areas, the guy still had to wait a little bit. <laughs> but he transformed his life. This guy was blessed. He came out of his father's house with only a, his wife. With only his wife. Only wife. No child. But this guy was super blessed. How many of you wants to be blessed like Abraham? 
We sing that song. Abraham blessing Samine. Abraham blessing Samine. I may not if you know it. I am blessing the morning. I am blessing the evening. Abraham blessing Samine. Hallelujah. Abraham blessing Samine. Hallelujah. Abraham blessing Samine. I am blessed in the morning. I am blessed in the evening. Abraham blessings are mine. <laughs> How many of us sings that song or knows the song? We sing it all the time. Abraham blessings are mine. Ha. Abraham blessings is mine, are mine. But what did Abraham do to acquire those blessings? So we are going to study the life of Abraham. And I'm going to tell you something that the life of Abraham, when I was studying this place with my team, it ministered so much. Because I saw light, so much light in the life of Abraham. And so we need to know the secret of his blessings. How, why did God open his heaven? You know, what did he do to provoke the mercy, the blessings of God? We need to do the same thing too. Praise the Lord. So we are going to start from Genesis chapter 11. That is where everything about Abraham started. So turn with me in your Bible to Genesis chapter 11, and I'm going to start from 27. Verse 27, I don't know where we are going to stop. So the point is, wherever we stop, we stop. Wherever the Holy Ghost leads us to stop, we stop. And when we come back like tomorrow or on Sunday, we continue from where we stopped. And if you really want to be blessed, you have to make sure you follow this series. Because it will transform your life. If you are ready to obey and listen to what the Holy Ghost is saying to you. And I pray that the Lord will open our eyes and give us encounters like never before. That will transform our lives. See, God, you only need one encounter from God to change your life. Hallelujah, somebody. So, we are going to start from Genesis chapter, two, uh, chapter 11 from verses 27. From verses 27... So we just go, just carry on 27, 28, and then we'll move on to 20. Okay, you just post for now. Let's do a Genesis chapter 11, 27 to 32. And then we will now read, when we want to continue from there, we'll read again. So let's do the first, let's just finish that chapter 11. Genesis 11, 27, verses 27 to 32. Verses 27 to 32. God bless all of you. Now, as he said, this is the genealogy of Terah. Terah begat Abram. Now, when you hear Terah, maybe some of you don't know the name of Abram's father. You know, this time, Abraham wasn't yet Abraham. He was called Abram. <laughs> because this was him, Abram. It was when the blessings of God located him, God changed his name. I pray that the Lord of hosts will change somebody's name today. In the name of Jesus Christ. God will give you that supernatural miracle that will change your name today. See, God gave Abram. Abram. See, here it was Abram. Not Abraham. Abram. Take note of that. Because when the blessings of God shows up in your life, there will be a sign that you have been blessed. See, let me tell you, I always encourage people to go after the word. Because there is power in the word of God. There is deliverance in the word of God. There is healing in the word of God. There is blessings in the word of God. Far above prophecies and all of that, there is doors, open doors, open heavens in the word of God. I always call, encourage my people to, to, to pursue the word of God because that is where, where your change will come from. When you get revelations, when God gives you insights of his word and you cling to it, you hold on to it, it will transform your life. I'm telling you, the word of God has changed my life. The word of God has transformed my life in so many areas. I am telling you, three years ago is different. Two years ago, last year, even this year. Each year, God has been taking me from glory to glory, from grace to grace. I am telling you, from one level to the other. <laughs> My window is open. 
from one level to the other one level and that is how we are supposed to be you are not supposed to be stagnant you are not supposed to be rotating on the spot for 10 years what is that that is not the will of god brethren it is not the will of god that you should just be in the spot on the spot one year two years three years four years uh -uh. no 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 that is not the will of God. Stagnation is not of God. So you need insight into the word of God. You need revelation, revelational knowledge in the word of God. You need wisdom in the word of God. And from there, God will begin to bombard your mind with business ideas. God begin to locate you to your husband. God begin to te teach you how to, how to attract his goodness, his blessings, his promotions, his, bless his, his glory, his goodness. He's so unfortunate that today Christians, they are not interested in God's word. And you want blessings there is no way you'll be blessed when you reject the word of god understand this understand that god has laid down principles for us god has given us principles to follow in life but when we turn our heart away from these principles we have just turned our hearts away from our blessings understand that there are keys for open doors there are keys for divine location there is keys for in divine intervention there is there are keys for test there for blessings but you are the one that needs to connect to that key and all these keys for every stage in our lives is here in the word of god if you will know how to connect to it every doors that you want god to open for you the key that you are looking for to open that door i am telling you it is 100 percent in god's word the reason many people are not being blessed is because they refuse to connect to the word of god the reason some people are not getting healed is because they are refusing to, the, to be connecting to the word of god the reason some are still stagnant is because they are refusing to connect to the word of god your word is a light unto my path. The word of God is light for our life. So when you reject it, you have rejected the light. You have rejected revelation. You have rejected victory. You have rejected testimony. And everything good that comes with the word of God that is light for you. So I encourage you today. In this series, pay attention. Connect. Connect. And the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now let us read. This is the genealogy of Terah. Terah is the father of Abraham. Abraham. So we'll be calling him Abraham for now until we get to the place where God changed his name. Terah is Abraham's father. We know Abraham, we know Abraham, but we don't know the name of his father. For those of you that don't know, so his father's name is Terah. Terah. Terah begat Abraham. Nahor and Haran. Haran begat Lot. Now, Lot, we know Abraham and Lot. Abraham and Lot. Lot is, uh, what do you call it? Is, it, is that what they call, uh, is it uh, nephew? Lot is the son to Abraham's brother. God bless you for posting the scripture. Okay, say, and Haran died before his father Terah in his native land, in all of the Chaldeans. So, uh, Lord Father had died. Then Abram and Nahor took wives. The wife of Abram's, the wife of Abram's, uh, 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 Abram's wife was Sarai. And now look again, Sarah was not Sarah, it was Sarai. S A R I I don't know how to pronounce that one. In my village, we call it Aro. <laughs> if you are from Nigeria, that is how we call it Aro. If my children are here, they'll be laughing at me. They say, oh no, mom, it's R. R. I've been out with the column. Sarai. <laughs> and the name of Nahor's wife, Milka. The doctor of Haran, the, uh, Haran, the father of Mika and the father of Iska. But Sarai was barren. She had no child. Abraham and his brother, brother got married the same day. The same period. They both took wives, but his brother already started producing, started having children. But Abraham, Sarah, Sarai was barren. And Terah took his son, Abraham, and his grandson, Lot, the son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law, Sarai, his son, his son, Abraham's wife. And they went out 
went out with them from all of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan. And they came to Haran and dwelt there. So the days of Terah were 205 years. And Terah died in, 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 in Haran. Now the father of Abraham, this is where they are joining. They are from Abraham originally was from the land of all. And so the father started the journey process, took his family, Abraham, his wife, and all his children and family, and he left that country, going to the land of Canaan. But the guy did not arrive in Canaan. And so Abraham was caught up with family. He was entangled with his family. Now we are moving to chapter 12, where the story really begins. The life of Abraham started from Genesis 12. The the the, the, the this uh, the 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 upper part from 27 is just to give you the family background of Abraham. That is his family background. Now this is what happened. Now even at that place, there is something I discovered about Abraham. There is something I discovered about Abraham. Abraham was a patient man. Now. If in chapter 12, we are going to read chapter 12 from verses 1. He says, now the Lord has said to Abraham. Now this is where the calling came to Abraham. He said, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. And make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. My God. Now you may be thinking, this promise is for Abraham alone. Uh -uh. We are connected to this promise. Say, I am connected to the promise I am connected to Abraham's promise. Abraham, write it in full. I am connected to Abraham's promise and his blessings. We, he, say, he says, and in you, all the families of the earth, of which I am a part of. Are you not the families of the earth? Are you not on this earth? He says, and in you, all the families of the earth, which includes us. Ah... And you should, let's 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 go back again and read this thing. I want you to open your spiritual eyes, read it with your spiritual eyes, read it with your spiritual sight. Because many of us today are suffering, are, 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 are still in poverty, are still going through whatever, because we do not have this insight. I am connected to Abraham's blessing, we are connected to it by right. From the very beginning, from the very beginning, from the word go, we are a part of this covenant. But how come this covenant is not working in the lives of Abraham's children? We Abraham blessings are mine. We even sing it as a chorus. Abraham blessings are mine. But how come your life is not blessed? If I ask you now. Uh, 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 what is prayer request is see if I ask you Nana, Nana, what do you want God to do for you let me tell you one is healing many of us are sick number two is uh, I want a job is it not blessing promotion uh, financial breakthrough still part of the blessing oh my fruit of the womb it is still part of the blessing I want a husband now still part of the blessing I want a wife it is part of the blessing now tell me what is it you want in life that is not connected to this blessing but how come you are not being blessed what are we doing wrong what are we doing wrong we sing it if abraham's blessings is ours how come we don't see it how come it is not manifesting in our lives you will see the people that are uh, uh, that suffer the most are people we call christian in quotes because everybody is a christian how do you know if you are a christian self we have different categories of Christians. So we have the normal Christians who knows how to quote scriptures. You know, they can preach, do everything, believe, even think they believe the scripture. But they are still disobedient to that same scripture. 
There are some Christians who Christians who take the word of God that suits them and reject the one they don't like in the word of God. But there are Christians who will obey the word of God to the latter, even if it hurts them. So you cannot tell me that these different categories of Christians will be blessed in the same uh, 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 volume of blessings. It can never be. The way God will bless the one that sacrifices and diligently obeys the word of God cannot be the same blessings he will give to the one that is just knows the scriptures and quotes it, but the word, that one is pass, passing through the Bible, but the Bible is not passing through him or her. It doesn't matter whether you sleep and wake up in the church. God is not looking at all these things. So you can be walking in the house of God. You can be doing every different, many different things in the church of God, but your heart can stay be far from God. And so why is Abraham's blessing not working for us? Why is it not working in our lives? Why is there a connection? Through this study, this series, we will begin to understand why. And for those that will amend their ways, reconnect back to God, your life will take a new turn. But for those that choose to remain the way they are, well, that is between you and God. Because at the end of the day, you cannot really force anybody to obey the word of God. You can only preach and hope that they will turn around and repent and change. Praise the Lord. Now let us read it again. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. Look at that. He will bless those that blesses us. And I will cause those who causes you. In, and in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now God has given Abraham a promise and instruction. God called him out for a special purpose. It is God who has called Abraham out. Get thee out of your family. Get thee be separate. Separate yourself to me. Abraham, get out of your father's house. Get out of your mother's house. Leave your family alone to a place I will show you. And this is what I am going to do. God have, may have been speaking to you. God may be giving you divine instruction. Are you obeying? Are you following? Are you listening? Some of us don't even listen to what God is saying. God may be telling you, okay, I want you to move just like he did to Abraham. I want you to relocate from um uh, whatever from London. I want you to relocate to Manchester, to a land, to a place where I will show you. God may be giving instruction, divine instruction. Whenever God gives us divine instruction, it is for a purpose. But some of us are very, very uh, uh, disobedient. We do not, even though sometimes we hear, we listen, but we don't do. Whatever God is saying to you, do learn to be obedient to his instructions. God promises to Abraham is also us. We are connected by grace to the promises and to the blessings of Abraham. So when your life is not moving in the right direction, connect to that blessing. Now look at that. Abraham de so Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken to him. He obeyed. And look, and Lot went with him. Lot, is he not part of the family? God told him, see, from your family. Lot is part of his family. God, was, God already gave him that divine instruction. Leave your family members alone. Go. Probably God expected Abraham to just take his wife and go. Uh -uh. But Lot, he inherited Lot from his father. Because now his father was late. And so he had to take over the responsibility of Lot, his brother's son. And so Lot tagged along. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. See? 75. I said, God, 75 whole years. Whenever God calls you, is in is his morning. Understand it that God is never too late. At 75, God still had a good plan for Abraham. 
at 75 god was not done with him yet and this is where people will be thinking that oh i'm too uh, i'm getting too old no husband is coming no husband is coming i'm getting too old no child is coming oh i've been married for 10 years my womb nothing oh i've been living in this country no documents oh i've been sick no healing i've been waiting and waiting on the lord it seems that god has forsaken me no 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 god will never forsake his own he will never the bible says he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him he is the only rewarder of those that sincerely and diligently seek him are you seeking him sincerely are you seeking him diligently Abraham was not fighting with God at 75. The man had no child. His wife was barren. His brother already had children. His brothers, not even only brother, brothers already had children. But the guy had none. But he was still loving God. He was still serving God. He did not allow his physical challenge to stop him from loving God. He did not allow his life challenge to hinder him from obeying God. But we are now in a generation where any small thing, we rebel against God. God has forsaken me. God did not answer me. I asked him for this. I ask him for that he didn't do it we begin to rebel but abraham still followed he obeyed god at the age of 75 years when he departed from there and abraham took sarah his wife and lot his brother's son and all their possessions that they had gathered see he didn't take the rest of his family members except lot he took lot and all his property and people whom they had acquired in heron and and his servants and they departed to go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. Abraham passed through the land of uh, uh, land of the place of she uh, um, Shechem as far as the terebinth tree of Morab. And the Canaanites were then in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, To your descendants, look at that again, second appearance, second encounter. May the Lord give you that encounter that will change your life for good. May the Lord give you an encounter that will transform your life. May the Lord give you an encounter that will rewrite and change your destiny for good and for better in the name of Jesus Christ. He says, then the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, to your descendants, I will give this land. Now God is giving him more promises. God is giving him more assurance that the land of Canaan has been given to him. He said to your descendants, I will give. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. And he moved from there to the mountains of uh, a mountain east of Bethel. And he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called the name of that place uh, uh, and called the name of the Lord. So Abraham journeyed going on still towards the south. Now listen to, now look at one characteristic of Abraham. He knows how to appreciate God. He values the word of God. See what the Bible says there. After God had finished talking to him, what did he do? He built an altar to the Lord in that place. He built an altar. You, do you have any altar? Have you built an altar for the Lord? Have you built an, do you, even your house, do you have an altar? Altar represents a place of fellowship, a place of worship. Abraham knows how to worship. Abraham knows how to connect to God. He knows the right thing to do. Even most of us, when God does something in appreciation, he built there. He worshipped God. He appreciated God. He thanked God. Many of us, when God gives us encounters, when God blesses us, when God does anything for us, we are not, we don't even appreciate him. We don't even thank him. We don't even worship him. We don't even, we just use mouth. It took more than lip service. Abraham built. It took him time to build. build. He, it cost him money to build. He, to build an altar. It took him time. It cost him money. 
but he did the needful. Even many of you, you will come here, God will heal you. I will pray for you. God will heal you. You can never even bring an offering. God will do, will do spend three hours to conduct deliverance for you. And that demon is gone. You are free. You will never come with thanksgiving. You cannot even appreciate God with your worship. Even when we say, let us worship. Whenever we come, you are worshiping. That is when people don't want to stay. They will quickly go. Thank God is an online ministry. There are many people online right now. So they will just, oh, this one is worshiping. Oh, yeah, I'll come back later. Let me look for the one that is prophesying. Let me look for the one that is doing this. Let me look for the one that is doing that. People are not interested in worship. People are not interested in the word of God. But this is where the fire, the power, the anointing, the giftings, the miracle lies. If you know how to connect to God, if you know how to touch the heart of God, the sky cannot be your limit. Heaven will be your limit. I am telling you. Abraham, this is one secret of Abraham. Whenever God gives Abraham an encounter, he will build an altar. Not just Abraham. Jacob did the same thing, his son. They learned it from their father. So it's as if, oh, this God appreciates when we do this for him. But this year, say, oh, eh, times has changed, no doubt. But even at that, you still appreciate God. There are now, thank God for Jesus, there are many ways you can appreciate God. And a man that is that has a thankful heart, a grateful heart, you are, as, you are opening doors for more. Let me tell you, you as a person, when you give do something nice, you go out of your way to help somebody. You go out of your way to assist somebody. And this person does not show appreciation. As if the person is acting as if it's their right, it's their entitlement. You go out of your way to, to be there for somebody, to help them. You spent your time, you spent your money, you spent your data. You just did something good for this person. And they just collected it and move as if nothing happened. They don't even appreciate it. My dear, when this person comes next time, you'll be reluctant to do to help. You said the last time I helped you, you didn't even show nothing, no appreciation. And it is so bad. It is so bad, very wrong. You will not want to appreciate. Next time the person has something to say, this one that I helped last time. He didn't even care to know whether I helped him. He just as if it's your right. It's not your right. It is God that put it in the heart of that person. That is why we appreciate everything. Now, even your children, when you give your son, your daughter something, I am telling you that this is one of the secrets of Abraham, why he was constantly blessed. He knows how to appreciate God. Even some of you, God has blessed you. You will swallow your testimony. You will eat your testimony. How do you expect God to bless you again or give you another testimony? The one that he gave you already, you did not even share it. You did not even give him a thanksgiving offering. God blesses you with a house. You bought a house. God blesses you with a car. You bought a car. God blesses you with fruit of the womb. God blesses you with so many things, a job. You cannot even bring an offering. Okay, God even does, it sets you free from demonic attacks. God heals you. You cannot share your testimony. You cannot bring a thanksgiving offering. You cannot come to share. You swallow the testimony. And you want God to do it again. You want God to bless you again. How possible is that? Do you know sometimes even, maybe God has used you, you've prayed for somebody, they got healed. You've prayed for somebody, they got delivered. You spent time praying for somebody and all of that. They don't even... Like that. And <laughs> I was reading that scripture this morning. And, and they don't even appreciate you. You just get tired. Even next time you are, the, the desire to pray for them goes. I'm telling you the fact. Say this ungrateful person. You will do, you are always there encouraging them, counseling them. Even on your birthday, they will not even send you any birthday gift in appreciation. They will not even send you Christmas gift in appreciation. They don't even care. They don't value you. But they can spend thousands on themselves. They can buy a new house, buy a new car, do new things, but they will not value you. Even your pastors in your churches, they're not to talk about the almighty God. What do you think? If Abraham was ungrateful to God, this one, God have not even blessed him yet. God was just giving him a promise. He just had a promise. And he built an altar. 
This is a man, a heart that is appreciative. Even you, when you give your little child something, the child just takes it and goes, you say, come back here. What do you say? The child will say, thank you. Say, okay, God bless you. If it is the same thing with God. Even when you wake up in the morning, you think it is your right. You cannot appreciate God for the gift of life. To say, Lord, thank you for blessing me today. Oh, you wake up in the morning. The first thing is to carry your phone. You are looking for chat. You are looking for business deal. You are looking for what you have missed. You are looking for, oh, what, what is it that you are going to do today? You are looking for, you know, just anything except God. Anything except God. It is so wrong. There are things you do that will provoke the blessings of God. There are things you will do that will move the hand of God. When you think that, oh, uh, my pastor after all is my pastor, is, is his job. Really? Your pastor that is spending time to intercede for you, for that your job, for that your business to break through. And you know it, but you can't even take, as in, maybe once in a while, say, just give them an appreciation, appreci appreciation offering. And then the most annoying one is, even you have a testimony, you swallow it. You cannot come and share and testify. And then you want us now, next time to go and you want something, God to do something now. How do we approach God? God will say, the one I did for her last year. Good evening, Sister Gail. God bless you. You are welcome, beloved. God will say, the one I did for him last year. The one I did for her last year. She did not even appreciate. She did no thanksgiving offering. Nothing, no, no appreciation. We are in a generation where people are so self-centered. Abraham was not like that. Abraham was even looking out, even for Lot. He loved his family. But another thing I saw here about Abraham was patient. Abraham patiently waited to hear from God. Now, there's another issue why many of us are crashing. God have not told you to go into that business. You carry yourself, you enter. God have not told you to go do that job. Maybe you 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 want to do a certain job. Maybe you want to do, oh you love you want to do medicine for example. And God is not leading. You. God is telling you, I don't want it. He has see despite the fact you want to do medicine, but from where you were born, you were born with a gift. You know how to make hair. You just you know how to braid hair. You know how to make people look good. You know how to do makeup. You know how to do these things. But then you want, you know, you don't want, you take it as a leisure, you know. And then you want, you have the brain. You want to study medicine. And God begins to minister to you. I don't want you to do medicine. I want you to go braid hair. I want you to open a salon. And you say, ah, me, with all this, my brain, I should go and open a salon. Ah. And then you just force yourself and enter the medicine. And then two years, five years down the line, you become frustrated. Why? Because God's hand is not in it. The Lord speaks. Abraham was very patient. He did not rush out of his father's house because he's not a full grown man. You know, in this time now, once a girl is 18, they want to run out of their parents' house. They want to start living their life. They want to move out. They want to, you know, they're always in a hurry. Even so we are today, we are always in a rush, in a rush, in a rush. You don't, before you go into something, you are not asking God's opinion. You are not seeking the face of God to know if this is the plan of God for your life. If this is the will of God for your life, brethren, when you live your life outside the will of God, your life will be frustrated. When you get married outside the will of God, your marriage, your life will be frustrated. That is why you seek God for that man you don't get carried away don't be thinking oh i'm getting too old there is no need to pray a, a man is a man it doesn't matter as long as he's a man a man is a man a man is not a man not all men are men and not all man is for you there is a particular one and a specific one for you if you miss that one your life will be miserable and then you will leave god's uh, perfect will and you will end up in the permissive will why? Because you were not patiently praying. You were not patiently waiting on God. Abraham waited until he had God. Beloved, you need to wait on God. You need to wait to hear him concerning everything in your life. If you want to do a job, Father, this job, is this your will? He will confirm it. If that job is giving you peace,
if that job, anything that God gives you will always give you peace. If there is anything that God, that you have that is not from God, it will never give you peace. If you are doing any illegal business, you will not have peace because God is a righteous God. He does not take pleasure in sin. If you are doing a job where you have to be bribing or you have to be bribed, it is no longer the will of God. You are in a job where oh, uh, for you, you have to lobby. And they say, you need to see us, you need to settle us. Settle you to do what? So you have to bribe people to be promoted. You have to bribe. Any promotion you acquire through bribe is not the will of God. Because God is the one that promotes and such promotion. And, and sometimes we see these things in movies where you see like a boss is telling a Christian sister to lay with him or her. To come and sleep with him before he, she, she can get that job. Or before she will be promoted. And because that sister is desperate, say, oh, let me just go. I need a job. When I finish, I will beg her for forgiveness. That is deliberate sin. It's dangerous. What if you do not have the time to repent and you die in the process? Who to blame? Who to blame? Anything that God gives you comes with peace. If God gives you a husband, it will come, that husband will come with peace. If God gives you a business, you cannot be having sleepless nights. So whatever you are doing now, that relationship, that marriage, that job, business, whatever it is you are doing, is it the will of God? Has God spoken to you about it? See, when you are praying and praying and God is quiet, you wait. You are waiting one year, continue to wait until God confirms it. He confirms it in different ways. One major way of God's confirmation is peace. Peace. That thing gives you, when you think about it, you don't, you, there is no fear in you. There is no fright. You are not afraid to step it, step out or step into what God is leading you. Abraham waited. He was in his father's house with his brethren. He was there. He, maybe then his life had no direction. But even at that, he was even blessed because we were told that he left his father's house with some of his men. All the things that he has acquired. So even while he was there, God was blessing him. Apart from children, Sarah, Sarai, his wife was barren. But that did not stop Abraham. And for God to come and begin to make such a powerful promise to Abraham, it means that Abraham has always been faithful to God, even though they did not say it. Because God cannot just come and meet a sinner and say, I am, leave your father's house, I will show you to a land. No, God cannot just come meet a sinner and begin to give you such heavy blessings and promises. So it means that Abraham met the requirement. My dear, there is a requirement for blessing. There is a requirement for promotion. There is a requirement. If we are not meeting the requirement, we have missed it already. Ha. I'm telling you, I say you'll be blessed with this Abraham series if you are ready to listen. And if you obey, your life will not be the same again. Abraham met God's requirement. He met God's standard. God could trust him. Can God trust you? Can God trust you with finances? Can God trust you with his work? Can God trust you with anything? While you are waiting, you are busy doing what you need to do, but just still waiting to hear him and hear what he has to say to you. Many a time we are suffering because we run ahead of God. And we run ahead of time. When God's timing hasn't come for you to do anything, and then you go into it, you will be frustrated. If God's timing hasn't come for you. If God's timing hasn't come for you. I'm telling you. So you need to wait. Somebody type, wait for God's timing. Everybody type it. Wait. Tell yourself, type it. Wait for God's timing timing wait for god's timing i want you people to type it i want to see you typing it wait for god's timing we need to learn to wait for god's timing 
don't run ahead. Do you know, even while uh, Abraham's father had died, Abraham still was there in his father's house. Abraham could have said, oh, my father have, is dead. Let me just move on. Let me just go somewhere else. He would have taken himself out of his father's house before God spoke. No, Abraham still tarried. He was still waiting for direction. He was still waiting for direction. What is it you are believing and waiting God for? Sometimes the way you expect God to show up, he may not show up like that <laughs> because he is God. His ways are not our ways. Probably if you have taken that step, maybe it would have cost you your life. And God said, just suffer a little bit, endure this pain a little bit. I am working it out my own way. Because if I had, if you had seen a doctor, probably that doctor, that doctor would have damaged a whole lot of things in your life. Maybe that doctor would have damaged a whole lot of things in your life. Wait for God's timing. Take it as a message. Take it personal. This, this message is for me. This message is for me. Wait for God's timing. Sometimes, do you know that waiting periods can be tough? Waiting period can be tough. Waiting period can be stressful. Waiting period can be uh, painful. It can be painful. But still you have to wait. It is not easy to wait. There are some situations there. Eh, it's so difficult to wait. But yet it is still better to wait than to make a to make a blunder. There are some imagine somebody that is 50 years, 55 years, 60 years, believing God for a husband or fruit of the womb. And then you are still saying, you are still saying, don't worry, wait for God's time. At 60 years, you are still telling the person, wait for God's time, your baby is coming. <laughs> the person will just look at you and say, This person must be mad. <laughs> It, does she know what she's saying? I am 60 years old. Almost, in, in, if not already in menopause. And you are telling the person to wait on the Lord. Wait, God is doing it. God will sort it out. Are you kidding me? Wait for what? what, 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 are, what the person says, what am I waiting for? <laughs> I should wait. At what age? I am 55. You are still telling me to wait. Please, my dear, just sit down there and keep quiet if you have nothing to say. Because it is, it is, it is not easy at that time to wait. Because you are, the thing you hear is time is going, time is going, menopause. In your dream, menopause. Your eyes open, menopause. Hey, menopause. How can I get pregnant with menopause? Ah, God. Ah. Even sometimes God may be telling you, maybe, maybe in a scenario like that, Maybe God is even speaking. You are not paying attention because you are desperate to have your own. And maybe God has destined you to, to be a mother to those orphans. God wants you to go and adopt an orphan who has no parents. Baby orphan. And adopt him and give and love them like your own child. There are people God has destined for this purpose. I'm telling you the facts. They don't have biological children. But God will put it in their heart to go and adopt a child that really loves, that really needs love. And God was telling me that the orphanage you are building, this is one of the aim and objective. It will give, it will bring children, it will bring joy to many homes. God told me that many children, many of our children will be adopted. And they will live a good life. Many people trusting God for the fruit of the womb. You will contact us, our orphanage, when we are ready. And then you come and start adopting our babies, our children. Even though, not to, even you that have children, you already have, you have one, you have two. You will adopt one or two and give them, those orphans, just adopt them and give them hope and a future. And then, and then when you do that, your, your door will open. Blessings will begin to flow in your life. This is one of the, this is one of the reasons God has already told me. He's sending us to open that orphanage to, to give this, some of these children, they will, they, will, they will live good. They will, be, they will end up in a good home.
There are some people, this is what God wants you to do. Even if you have your own child, God still wants you to adopt one. One child that does not have any hope and give them a future and give them a hope. You see our God, eh? his ways really is not our ways. Abraham patiently waited until God spoke to him. And God, he obeyed the moment. Another thing, don't delay. When God says anything, he will let you know the time. When you know this is the timing that God is talking about. Get up and go. Don't over, you know, sometimes because of fear. Maybe God is leading you to start a business. And you are so scared because you've never done a business before. And God has given you a clear revelation of this business. And before you say praise the Lord, the Lord has opened the way, giving you connections. The Lord has provided the finances you need to run that business. The Lord has given you the finances you need. But it is you now just stepping out in faith. You are so scared. Maybe you were supposed to start the business five months ago. It is already five months. You still haven't started. But everything, the resources, the connection, everything is waiting. Delay can be dangerous. Some delays can be dangerous. If God is telling you to move and you are sitting, you are refusing to move, you may miss that opportunity that you cannot recover again. If God is telling you to wait, you decided to move ahead of God. You may find yourself in trouble because God did not send you. So everything, there has to be a balance. There has to be a balance. You need to balance it. Abraham was very sensitive in the spirit. So we need sensitivity to function right. You have to be sensitive in the spirit. You need to be sensitive to what God is saying, not what your, your flesh, your emotions. Many of us are controlled by emotions. Our flesh and emotions is controlling you. No, you need to listen to and be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Ghost. Because sometimes, hey, the Holy Ghost will just tell you something just once. And you will not hear him repeat himself again. He will not repeat it again. That thing he sent you to do or what he told you. He will not repeat himself. And if you are not sensitive to catch what God is saying in that situation, if you are not sensitive enough to capture what the Lord is saying, you will miss it as well. So sensitivity is very important. Abraham was very sensitive to the leading of God. Get out, go, leave. Immediately he left. And then he got to that place. God appeared again. That is, see, that was confirmation number two. God confirms, oh my God, all these are just new. This is new insight I'm just getting now. This is the thing about the word of God I've noticed of late. It doesn't matter how many times you read it. The more, if you are repeatedly reading it, each time you read it, you get new revelation. That is why I say it is new every day. I didn't even see this one before, but I saw, I'm seeing it now. That God confirmed again. He came to reassure Abraham the second time of his promises. He came to reconfirm. God will always confirm and reconfirm and reconfirm to us. If you are on the right path, God will always confirm. When you are on the wrong path, he will step aside and he will leave you to do your thing. Until when you made it, when you finish making blunder with your life, then you can run back to him again. He will still accept you. <laughs> so when you are on the right path, God will always confirm his word. God will always come to confirm his word each time. And I am a living example of that. I remember from the beginning, it was a specific thing. And when I obeyed that one, he will come back and that. And then I began to hear his promises. Then he began to make covenant with me concerning this ministry. And each time he will always, always, always confirm and reconfirm. Then I say, oh, I am praying and asking God for confirmation. God will tell you something. Pray. If it is God, he will confirm it. He will confirm it. Because God is not a man. He's not the author of confusion. He's not a man that he should lie. God is not the author of confusion at all. He came back to reassure Abraham that it is me, God speaking, not your flesh. I am the one speaking, not your emotions. And Abraham was sensitive to know that this is God. He built an altar as confirmation, as an as acceptance. Say, Lord, I hear you. I agree to do what you want to do. And Abraham continued on his journey. Now, the place Abraham was, 
in the land of um, we are now on verse 10 now there was a famine in the land and Abraham went down to Egypt to dwell there for the famine was severe in the land now and it came to pass when he was close to enter to entering Egypt <laughs> That he said to Sarai, his wife, <laughs> Indeed, I know that you are a woman of a beautiful countenance. Therefore, it will happen. When the Egyptians see you, that they will say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will let you live. <laughs> Please say you are my sister. <laughs> Say you are my sister, that it may be well with me for your sake, and that I may live because of you. See Abraham carrying promises over his head. Look at what happened. Look at what happened. Hey, my carabo Let's read it. Finish. Let's finish reading this chapter twelve. So we are on. Uh, somebody post. Um, Genesis chapter 12, 1 to, to the end. The end is 20. Is it 20? To 20. 1 to 20. Genesis 12, 1 to 20. Okay, now look. So, so it was when Abraham came into Egypt that, that the Egyptians saw the, the, the woman that she was very beautiful. The princess of Pharaoh also saw her and commended her to Pharaoh. And the woman was taken to Pharaoh's house. He treated Abraham well for her sake. Which means Abraham was right too. If not, now he said they for treat the guy bad. <laughs> he had sheep, oxen, male donkeys, male and female uh, um, servants, female donkeys and camels. But the Lord plagued. Okay, before then, let's, let's stop there. Let's take a pause. Now look at Abraham. Abraham was going now in fulfillment. Where he was, there was trouble. There was famine. No food, dryness, no progress, no promotion. Now, Abraham, one thing again I want to see here. Did Abraham ask God, God, there is famine. We did not see a place where it says, I said, we did not see a place where it says, Abraham called on the name of the Lord and said, Lord, there is famine. What do I do? He didn't seek God. He, he used his own initiative. Oh, my family, this land is dried up. No, nothing they happen. Nothing is happening here. Let's go for, let's go to a place. This place is dry now. We are in famine. Let us go to a place. and Let's relocate to a place where we can get food, where it's not as bad as this place. But did he consult God? Did he consult God? Did he seek God's opinion? But the guy left. And then he realized in this place, his wife is so beautiful. Say, come, 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 let me tell you, my dear. Don't tell them I'm your husband. So the guy was ready to compromise. Oh. Because of what? Fear. Fear is an enemy. Fear is destructive. Fear will rob you of the blessings of God. Fear will fight against faith in your life. Fear is a tool in the hands of the devil. The devil can use fear to torment and paralyze your life. You begin to panic, you anxiety. If they ask you now, why are you panicking? You can't even say. Why are you having anxiety? Say, I don't even know. Okay, why are you depressed? You can't tell why. You yourself, you don't even know, but you just know you are depressed. Enemy. Fear. Doubt. Abraham here just took his own initi initiative even god was not pleased with he, what he did sarah and they went and the guy sarah complied but in recent sarah if you go for that there's a place to read you see that when abraham did this again i think it was with Abel, abimelech also he said i didn't lie it's true sarah is my sister in a way he didn't lie because sarah is his half sister is his father's child Different, the same father, different mother. Oh, you didn't know? You didn't know that uh, uh, Sarah and Abraham are the same father? Different mother? They are half, is half it, uh, Sarah is, you know, in those days, they are allowed to, to marry each other. Back in the days then. But Jesus has changed everything now. 
they were really sisters but that was not the real motive he said that he didn't say because they were sisters his motive was wrong his motive for claiming uh, 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 for saying it that uh, 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 for telling them that Sarai was his sister was so that he would not die was so that he would not be killed was because he was afraid he was afraid to die. He said, so that they will treat me well for your sake, oh, because you are too beautiful. If they hear you are my wife, they may kill me and take over you. And the guy really was right. That was fear speaking. Most times we allow fear to speak. Speak in us, speak through us. We allow fear to hinder us. Abraham could have allowed God to prove himself. He is carrying authority. Nothing would have happened to Abraham now. Do you know why I know nothing would have happened to him? They, he, God would have made sure he put angel ahead of Abraham so that he would be favored there. But Abraham was too afraid to trust God to help him. And this is the fact, beloved. Most times we are confronted, we are faced with difficult situations that we do not even know what to do. That will cause us to be afraid. We will be afraid. It will bring fear. It will bring fear. And this fear will cause us to go sin against God. Fear will cause you to lie in your offices. Fear, check it now. Many of us are like Abraham and Sarah. Oh, maybe you came late to work. Why are you late? Oh, it's traffic. Uh, because you don't want to take the punishment for coming late. You don't want to face the consequence. Then we easily lie. When we are in a compromising situation, we, we, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? We compromise. We don't trust God to help us out of it. Oh, eh, God understands now. Eh, God understands. When I finish, I'll go and ask him for forgiveness. God knows. He understands. My dear, God no understands nothing. You are doing business. There's no truth in your mouth. You are lying. You are deceiving your customers. You are deceiving. There is no God understand. If you are, are many, I'm telling you the far from experience. Like us that are business people. Because I know I used to do it that time. Say, ah, this is not even out of fear. It was out of greed because we want to make more profit. You say this thing, I bought it for $1. I know I bought this thing for $5. Maybe you bought it $3. Ah, my sister, no profit. Oh, I'm only selling it, to, selling it to you for $8. My profit is only $3. So I, I bought it for $5. Meanwhile, you bought it for $3. But you have lied that you bought it for $5. So that you can have more gain. That one is greed. And you are not obligated as a business person to let tell anybody how much you bought your goods. It's none of their business. You don't have to lie to anybody to defend your business. You do not need to lie to anybody to defend your business at all. I, I'm selling it for $8. Take it or leave it, my sister. Uh, is it no money I paid for transport? Is it no money I used to ship it? Is it no time I'm using to market it? So it is $8. You can buy it or you don't buy it. It's fine. There's no rush, no challenge. It's as simple as that. The Bible says, let your yea be yea and your nay nay. Let your yes be yes and your no no. Let it be known. If your yes is yes, let your yes be yes. If your no is no, let your no be no. You don't need to go compromising your faith. You don't need to be compromising nothing. Abraham did this. And that is how we are when we are feast, especially when it got to do with finance. You cannot honestly say to your company or your office, even see you that is a sales, sales girl in a salon, in a shop somewhere, you will sell something and make double, maybe your madam or your boss asks you to sell this thing for $20. And it happens that you were blessed that day, you sold it for $25. You will remove the $5 on top. Say, Oga said I should sell it for $20. So this $5 is in my pocket. You are a thief. <laughs> your boss did not give it to you. So even if your boss says, say this thing for, or, or give it to the client for $30, you want to collect the change. No, you let them know, say, ah, ah, boss, you said I should sell it for $30, but uh, I put my own extra. And I put $5 on top for myself, uh, if you don't mind. And if your boss say they mind, let them go with the money. Hmm. 
<laughs> if your best and boss say no, some greedy boss will say no, let them be. But your conscience is free before God. You are not lying. There are many situations that you are you are pushed into a corner and you want to lie your way out of it. It wasn't easy. I knew I was delivered from lies when that day I came late. And the devil really was ready for me that day. Why are you late? And that day, eh? <laughs> there was no single drop of traffic on the road. The road was so clear. In fact, traffic like self is as if all the uh, village elders followed me to work that day. As I was approaching traffic light, it will just show green. It will just show green. No, no stopping to say, oh, it's red. At least to say I was delayed. There was no delay that day. I said, that is the day every road was so clear. Got to walk. Late. Why are you late? If it is before, I'll say, yeah, it's traffic. Some people will say they have flat tire. Why are tire not flat? Not, you know. You know, but for fear of the punishment of what uh, uh whatever is happening we we'll begin to tell lie and the thing that is that sometimes you will tell one lie and you use 10 other lies to cover one lie from one lie you tell another lie from one the, the two lies you tell the third lie the third lie you tell the fourth lie and before you do it the lie begins to build up you say when i finish i will ask god for forgiveness what if before you finish you die you didn't get the chance to ask god for mercy and deliberate sin is so dangerous, very dangerous. It opens wicked doors. Deliberate sin, it opens some kind of negative doors from the devil to frustrate your life. Deliberate sin. Hmm. Deliberate sin can truncate your life. It will just bounce you back. Three years back, five years back, ten years back. You will suffer a loss. So it's better to stay away from it. It is better. Abraham did the same because he was in a tight corner. Whenever you're in a tight corner, don't compromise your faith. Don't. Don't compromise your faith. Stand and let God defend you. I did it. I said, oh, well. He said, even, the, it was, even my boss that was asking me, was it because of traffic? Imagine that day there was no traffic. I, I paused. <laughs> That pause is, hey, chai, what do I say? Because before it was very easy. Because then we were not regenerated 100% the way we are now. That was before ministry started. Even though I was born again. We were still telling, we we'll say it's white light. There's no white light. There's no blue light. There's no pink light. There's no green light. Lie, lie is lie. No matter the shape or size, lie is lie. Some call lies wisdom. Oh, just apply wisdom. When they ask you, there is no wisdom. It is either lie, it is either a lie or not a lie. Abraham did that because he was in a tight corner. And this time, Abraham, for me, what do you think? For me, I feel like Abraham did not trust God enough to help him in that situation. Abraham felt like it was his duty to, to help himself. I feel like Abraham did not, uh, um, I feel like Abraham did not trust God enough as at this time. And also bear in mind, the guy ministry just started. Remember that his ministry just started. So he, he, he too is equally learning. <laughs> what is your excuse? When I went, I just said, I, I said, I said, I said, no, it's not traffic. Say, okay, why are you late? I said, mm, the truth is that <laughs> I didn't leave him on time. <laughs> I said, I said, at first I want to start. I said, mm. I said, I'm a Christian. I'm not going to lie. I said, I'm a Christian. I'm not going to lie. There was no traffic. I didn't leave him on time. If I had left him five minutes, ten minutes earlier, I would have made it in time. I said, okay, come. Let's go. I said it before. Let's go to the office. You need to sign, sign this. And I said, yeah, no problem. Ah, no, whatever you want to do, I'm fine with it. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. So let me take the punishment and move on with my life. 
and we were walking. As we were just going to the office, and he just turned, just turned to him, what have I to do with you, patients? Go! She released me without signing nothing, without, you know, but do you know I could have lied? And said, oh, it's traffic, you know. Hey, and again, my tire, my, 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 I had a flat tire. And I didn't know how to change tire. Your woman of God don't know how to change tire. I'm telling you the truth. Eh? If my tire not do, do mune mune anywhere and throw me off course in anywhere, my dear, I don't know how to change tire. See, one day we had a flat tire. I think it was last year or last two years. We were coming from my home Bible study. <laughs> I have a spare tire in my car and I was carrying a passenger, one of my sisters, dropping her off. She stays in my area. We were just coming like this. Me, tire has punctured since so I was still driving the motor self. I didn't even know that tire has gone. Me, I was still driving, driving. I'm like, ah, I can hear like something is wrong or something. I could do like, I was feeling like ah, one side is somehow. So we now go, I parked. Came out so that my tire was condemned. Come and see. <laughs> we began to look for how to, even the girl who don't know how to change tire. Woman of God don't know how to change tire. Till tomorrow, I still don't know how to change tire. <laughs> My prayer, I only know how to drive. <laughs> I know how to drive the car. But ask me where, in fact, even where to open my bonnet. Eh? I've been driving for like almost 10 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I've had my license for like almost 10 years. I don't have to change tire. <laughs> because Papa does everything. He changes, he does all the things. So I didn't know how to, I don't know how to do anything. Concerning my car. The only place I know how to put petrol. And I know how to drive it. Anywhere. Just send me anywhere. I can't, I can drive. I drive like a man. If you give me room. I say, <laughs> I'm a very good driver. <laughs> You're a good driver, don't know how to change tire. <laughs> that day we were there oh, looking for how to change our tire. <laughs> I don't know how to change tire. The sister don't know how to change tire. I called Papa on the phone. Papa, flat tire, how do we change it? Papa was directing us. We brought it out. My daughter entered on that. We were doing back and forth, back and forth. Eventually, we had to call somebody. <laughs> the sister now called uh, somebody, one brother, to come and help us change tire. See, oh, we just stayed there. They wait for brother to come, and the brother came. See, and with ease like this, I say, I, I say, is that how easy it is? Just like that. Just na 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 na. Before how many minutes, tire fist, and all of that. Hi, daddy. I laugh myself. See, assuming there is nobody now, me, I will just <laughs> push the car to one corner, enter taxi, and go home. <laughs> They will come the next day and come and find solution when I've slept and woke, woke up, slept and woke up. I'm telling you, eh? I need to learn how to change tire. Mm. It's Papa. Papa does everything, do change everything, everything in the car. So me, I don't do nothing. I, see, <clears throat> before I learned to go, uh, when I was, I was driving, right? So I want to go and do my full uh, driving lessons. I did not know how to open bonnets. My car bonnet to open bonnet and also I'll be open bonnet. And then it was when I want to go learn my full driving lessons. Papa was not teaching me how to open bonnet. I was not okay. Is here press that button because you have to open your bonnet for the man like that. We have to put water. That was when I started learning. We have to put water inside the engine. Where you put this? Where you put that? Before I don't know. You see. So that is the day. <laughs> hey, God is good, though. <laughs> hey, I am telling you, so it is better to be watchful. Oh. Be very careful because this devil eh, is very crafty. Very crafty. The Bible says he's prowling like a roaring lion. Looking for whom to devour. Don't give him the chance. Don't let him devour you. Don't let him. See Abraham. Abraham. It's so easy. But you know, maybe if I had lied that day, maybe I was still, maybe that lie itself would not provoke me to go and do that thing. Eh? So uh, that's not our business. The fact that you came like you have to come and sign. Maybe I would have signed that thing like warning or to come. Maybe I would have collected warning or something. But see how mercy prevailed for being truthful. But I could have been afraid. Say, Chai, 
How many of us do these things? It seems so simple, but it's not simple. Lie is lie. And lies carries equal penalty. They say, oh, white lie, blue lie, purple lie. There is nothing like white lie. There is nothing like pink lie. Lie is lie. Avoid it. The Bible says, let your ye be ye. And your nay nay. In your place of work. In your business. In everything you do. Even when you want to go feel form. You are like, even on Facebook, you lie. You are a girl, you will put female. Some of you, you, you are you are 20 years, you go and put 30 years, or you go and put 10 years. You change your date of birth. You even lied. You lie in form. This, oh my God. Your name, self. You put fake name on your profile. There was a time um, the Holy Ghost was telling me, was it last year? I think it was last year that God just gave me this revelation. That many people on Facebook are using fake names on Facebook. And that sometimes maybe I am praying for you, for example, now. And that is like Sylvia is there now on Facebook. Uh, uh, Nalong Sylvia. I'm just looking at, I'm just using that as an example. And then maybe I'm praying for Nalong Sylvia. And maybe Sylvia say, oh, woman of God, I need a job. Please pray for me. And I look at her name. I invite her. I say, okay, oh, your name is Sylvia. Oh, Sylvia, I begin to release job. I say, Father, release job for Sylvia. Lord, make sure you release job for Sylvia. You know, and I begin to pray and, and prophesy and do all the things. And I'm using the name Sylvia. And maybe in real life, <laughs> this is real life, right? But outside Facebook, maybe her name is not even Sylvia. Maybe her name is not Sylvia. In her documents, even in heaven, her name is Mary. And then on Facebook, she's bearing Sylvia. And meanwhile, I am praying for Sylvia. 2018, right? <laughs> Maybe on Facebook now, I am praying for Sylvia. Now, heaven will say, oh, uh, angel, angel will say, oh, my daughter is praying for uh, uh, one of her followers. Oh, they need a job. Oh, and God says this angel, go and give uh, Sylvia a job. And then the angel say, okay. And then they begin to open the book of life or bring the book of remembrance. They open the book of remembrance and they are looking for Sylvia there that I've prayed for. Oh, my daughter is praying for Sylvia. Locate Sylvia with a job. Angel says, yes, yes, master. And then angels go to the book of remembrance. Let us look for Sylvia. Meanwhile, in your document, the day you were born, your parents gave you uh, uh, Mary. Your name is not Sylvia. In heaven, your name is known as Mary. God bless you, Pauline. Paulina, you are welcome. Your name is Mary. My dear, that miracle will not come. Why? Because I am praying on a wrong name. And when I preached it, many people changed their name, sharp, sharp. And then some of you, you are not obligated to tell anybody your year. Thank God for Facebook, uh, uh, what is it called, setting. You can uh, have your setting and you will, you, will, you will set it that nobody will see your age. They will only see your day and your month. They will only see the day you were born and the month. They don't need to see the year. If you are ashamed, you don't want people to know your year of birth. And some of you even go and change your day, date of birth. You are born on the uh, uh, 16th of May. You go and put 12th of August. Lie. That is a lie. You are feeling from, you are telling lies. It is a lie. You don't need to go, you don't need to pull your read day, pull your month. Uh, uh, block your ear that nobody will see it. It's there on Facebook. You on setting on every of this platform. There is this setting, or you can leave it blank. Don't even put anything. It is better. Don't put your day. Don't put your year. Leave it like that. Or you secure it. You put it. You secure it. Many of you, you will miss your blessings because of this small carelessness. You lie even in all these things. And you think it doesn't matter. It matters. Because the name, whenever God is bringing you blessings, God will not bring blessing to a fake name. It is your record in heaven they will open. When an angel, okay, this person is looking for the fruit of the womb. And God says, go and give her the fruit of the womb. Who? Uh, angel say, Mary. Oh, Mary who? Maybe Mary Johnson. Oh, Mary Johnson is looking for the fruit of the womb. And the woman of God is praying for her. Or the man of God is praying for her. Angel opens um, uh, your book, your record. And the name, they are looking for Mary Johnson. The name in the record, your record is Mary Johnson. And the name they are praying for is Agnes Rita. Or you put a, so I put a jolly jolly. You see the way some people put some name. They say jolly jolly. 
If it is, if you don't want people to know your surname, use your father's name. Use any your second name. Use your. I have a native, a traditional name that nobody knows. I I have never used it. Heaven knows is my real name. I was called that name. I was named that name. Even though I don't like using it, it's my traditional. Is in my language. I cannot change my my husband's name to my father's name. My father's name is my name. Even if I'm married, it's still my name. And heaven knows it as my name. I can change it to my own. I cannot put my two name, my first name and my second name. And I refuse to put my son name. But it will be my genuine first name, my genuine second name. But heaven recognizes it. Than for you to go and put a strange name and then you miss your blessings you even lie like that don't you know it's a lie when you put a wrong information on your profile it's a lie and lies lie you you will bear the same penalty because you just told a lie on facebook and people don't even know that even pastors self i see some pastors they even call themselves fake names on facebook because like the kind, the way the names, the way they, the way they bring the name comes out, you see that it's not like a proper name. You can abbreviate your name. Fine. That one is different. It's the abbreviation of your name. I am talking of completely using a name that is not your own at all. Heaven don't recognize that name. And it is a lie too. You are feeling from you lie. Anything you give, a lie, what is lie? Is when you give wrong information. So anywhere, whether on a form, on social media, on whatever, on wherever, you are using a, a, a wrong information. It's a lie. And it carries the same penalty. God bless you, Sylvia. God bless you. Good evening. It carries equal penalty. You don't understand. People, all these things will stand against us. Bible says we should be very, very careful. Why? Because we are surrounded by a thick cloud of witnesses. We are surrounded with thick cloud of witnesses. Thick cloud of witnesses. Hi. I pray, I pray, I just pray. I pray. If you know you have wrong informations on your on your profile, please go and change it. Whether it's Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, whatever. You put wrong age. Go and remove it. Put your real age or don't put at all. Leave it blank. Must everybody know you? you know. Or you can put your age and you set it so that nobody will know how many years. You don't want them to know that you are older than Methuselah. It's fine. But you can block it. Put your real age and block it. It is a lie. Lie is lie. Don't think your picture, even you, you go and carry, uh, you can use family member, all those ones, profile pictures. All of, Some people said they don't have single one picture of their own. And then they'll go and put ghost, ghost picture. They'll go and put, even the profile is so fake. And you are the one using it. Everything about your life becomes fake. And you think it is a witch worrying you. No witch is worrying you. It's just that heaven is not any prayer they pray for you with that name, with that picture, with that everything. It is not you. Do you understand? So let us be careful. Oh. Many of us are lying in so many areas of our lives. And heaven is taking record. Heaven is recording. Heaven is recording. And these things will stand against us on that day of judgment. God hates lies. And the Bible says that devil is the father of all liars. And all liars, it is in your Bible that all liars will have their place in the lake of fire. All liars will have their place. In the lake of fire. And you belong to your father, the devil. God forbid. Everyone say, God forbid. God forbid. The devil can never be my father. But if you are a liar, deceiver, the devil is your father. May the devil never be our father in Jesus' name. But scripture must be fulfilled. So we need to be very careful. Very, very careful. Be very, very careful. Ha. Now let's see what happens. And so this is actually what happened to Abraham. And Abraham, uh, 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 and so we are now on verse 17. I think we are going to end with um, Genesis uh, 12. Maybe tomorrow we'll continue from 13. So that um, 
what time did we start around seven something all right now look at that he said this there is also a lesson here to learn for us for us you know so verse 17 we are reading genesis chapter 12 1 to the whole of chapter 12 1 to um 20 now we are on verse 17 of genesis chapter 12 he says but the lord plagued pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai. <laughs> the guy carry, he go carry, he carry, um, what do you call it? Is it essential commodity or what do you call it now? He go carry wahala. <laughs> he carried trouble. He carried fire. <laughs> he said, but the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarah, Abram's wife. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, what is this you have done to me? Why did you not tell me that she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister? I might have taken her as my wife. Now, therefore, here is your wife. Take her and go your way. So Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him. And they sent him away with his wife and all that he had. <laughs> See the repercussion of lies. Hmm? There is something again. You know, here that I see about God. What do you see here about God? God is merciful. In here, I see the mercy of God. God is merciful. This and 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 one thing again is if you are a child or a carrier of promise, hmm? oh God, eh? Mm -mm. We can never understand him. The way he does some things, we can't even understand. Abraham was a carrier of promise already. He said, they that curse you is cursed. They that bless you is blessed. <laughs> so the man for taking Abraham's wife is already cursed by himself. And God began to plague him. It is the blessing. It is the promise that is in action. And God had to plague the man's house. He said, the man, it was too much for him. Must he marry every fine, fine, fine thing? That's how many people have married ghosts. You cannot see and respect your young age or old age. Eh? There are people like that. They cannot see and swallow spit and go their way. Their eye will be choking, choking, choking for other people's wife. Choking for other people's children. No self-control. Lack of self-control. And this lack of self-control is what has led people into trouble. Self lack of self-control has led... See, lack of self-control would have landed Pharaoh in trouble. God began to plague his house. Must you marry every fine thing? It's like some of you here, when you see fine boy, say, child, this guy fine, oh, this guy is handsome. You forget that he's not born again. This time you, are, you don't care whether even he knows what, who, he, he, for himself, he doesn't even know who is God. He doesn't even care about God. Maybe he's even a Muslim self. But because he's cute, you are ready to marry. It's not every cute thing you marry. It's not. This one, Anna, the man don't carry. And God, I see him, eh, he's a defender. I see God full of mercy. He knew the mistake Abraham made. And it wasn't really the fault of this man, Pharaoh. Uh -uh, it's not man. Now you see woman, you marry anyhow that those days. They deceived him. And the guy already brought uh, uh, Abraham, uh, Sarah to his house. Deception. But even in that, because Abraham is a carrier of blessing, grace was speaking. <laughs> grace was speaking for Abraham. <laughs> you think the man was comfortable? Maybe he's there crying and praying, God, my wife. Hey, my wife, Sarah. Hey, my wife. What if this man sleeps with her? My wife. And God was plaguing, dealing with. See, eh? this is how God is for us. He fights our battles. Abraham did not even know, may not even see that God was plaguing this man and his family. But while Abraham was right there in a predicament, his wife is in the hut, in the bedroom of another man, right there under his own nose. It will not be easy for him because he loves his wife so much. Abraham loves Sarah so much. It will be easy for him. You'll be feeling bad. 
But while he was there, he didn't know how God was going to do it. But God still went ahead of him. See, eh? sometimes you may see yourself falling into sin or uh, doing one mistake or the other. This one is a honest mistake. As long as you repent, maybe Abraham too, maybe when he did that, he's asking God, forgive me. You know, the Bible, we were told that if we were like, if they were to like just uh, write the Bible word by word, by word as it happened, uh, we can't read the Bible all our life. It would have been a very big book you cannot even carry around. And probably Abraham is, is talking to God, Father, Sarah, my wife, repenting, asking for mercy. And the mercy of God prevailed and began to fight on his behalf. Many a time, even Abraham then did not even know that God was fighting for him and plaguing the house of Pharaoh. Until Pharaoh came to say, you deceived me. Take your wife and leave. But while he was there seated on his own, in his, in his own corner, God was busy fighting on his behalf. Beloved, you may be thinking God is not in that situation. You may be thinking God is not fighting your battles. You may not even see him fighting, but trust me, he is fighting. The time God was plaguing the house of, uh, of Pharaoh, Abraham may not even see it or know. It was when God was done. It was then Pharaoh came and said, come this man. You see, that is why you don't give up. That is why you don't give up. Patiently, patiently wait on the Lord. For his best for your life. Patiently wait on the Lord. For his best for you. That is why you don't run ahead. Irrespective of what it is, God will always show up. If we trust him to show up. You are trusting, believing God for healing. God can show up. You are believing God for a husband. God can show up. You are believing God for children. God can show up. Is it for a job or finance or whatever? God can show up. Our God can always show up. If we, his children, knows how to trust him. If we know how to obey him. If we know how to do his will. God never gives up on us. We are the one that gives up on him. Even though, look at Abraham's faults. God still did not give up on him. God was still fighting for him. He's always fighting for us. God is always fighting for you. Sometimes we don't even see him fighting. We don't even see him doing it. Even sometimes it seems like, it seems like nothing is happening. And suddenly... We just see her, Mark Halados Yadabash. Our God is never too late. He knows how to do that thing at the right time. Maybe the reason God has not opened that way for you to get this thing that you so desire is that desire is that maybe that way if he had opened it would have ended your life uh, 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 faster. And God will allow you to bear the pain a little bit more so that he will perfect the way. Remember, he is the, there are many ways to anything, but he is the only way. So we need to learn to trust the way, him and him alone. He is always fighting. He will show up. He is always fighting for us. Ha. If only God will open our eyes to see the unseen battles that we have, he has fought for us. Maybe you would have died last year, but God preserved you. You may be still going to be going through pain, disappointment or something, but God knows why he preserved you. Probably that is how he can preserve you. There was a Christian movie that I watched. This guy forgot to protect him from them, killing him. He had to go mad. He was mad for a while. Like kidnappers got him, they were going to use him for ritual or something. Suddenly, it's not like he played it up. He just he went mad. Like they can't say, ah, this guy's he abandoned them, abandoned this car and ran away. He, he became mad instantly. But after a while, and in that madness, God led him to the village where he was even going to. He went there as a mad person. But the moment he stepped in the land like this, he just got healed. And like was like, ah, uh -uh, where am I? How did I get here? 
He didn't, know, he didn't even know how he got here. But this is when, like, people that know it will be crying, Hey, God is wicked. This man is a Christian. How come his life is like this? But God used madness to save him from danger. God can use anything, any scenario to save us from danger. It could be if God had not allowed that pain to persist. Maybe you would have fallen into the hand of a wrong doctor that would have just tampered and done some things and maybe by now you will be dead. Is it not better to bear the pain and wait on God than for you to have died his sins? He still has a hand in that thing. Even though it is painful, God still has a hand in it. He says the steps of the righteous are ordered. Look at Abraham. His steps was wrapped, was, was ordered. But sometimes we try to help God, like Abraham tried to help God. You don't even need to help God. Probably if Abraham had opened up to them in the beginning, maybe they would have even allowed him to stay if God was involved. Because if God can shut the mouth of, mouth of the lion, what can he not do? What can God not do? The thing is that most times we are not even patient enough. We run ahead of him. We feel like, oh, God is late. God is never too late, beloved. You are trusting God for a spouse. Hold on tight. You are trusting God for anything. Hold firm. Believe in his word. Believe in him. Do all that you need to do. Obey the scriptures to the latter. The time of affliction is when you should obey even more. Be more sensitive. Be more attentive. Listen carefully to what God is saying to you. God is God. He will never lower his standard for man. And sometimes I wanted to see, by the time this guy discovered that Abraham and Sarah lied to him, he chased them out of his land. So that is what happens when we try to help God. You see, Abraham's series, we are still in chapter one, um, our first chapter. And see, see the many lessons coming out. And I'm, trust me, many of you will not see this light you are seeing today. When you read the scripture, you'll say, that is why you need to ask God for insight. You read the scripture with your spiritual side. There are so many lessons in the scripture, but we don't see it. Look at this place and look at all the lessons. Maybe you have read it before, but you didn't see all these lessons you are seeing now. Abraham tried to help God. Even though God showed him mercy, the guy told them to leave. He lost his place in this in 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 uh, in, in Pharaoh's uh, 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 empire or in the in the land. God told him. I mean, Pharaoh said, "Just take your wife and leave home. Go. We don't want you." And that is how it, how 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 it all. He says, so, so Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him that they sent him away with his wife and all that he had. Everything. Everybody type it, I will not help God. I will not help God. Type it, I will not help God. May I never help God to fulfill his own plans for my life. Many of us have helped God and that is why we have failed. And that is why we are failing. God says he will give you a husband. And then devil brings a husband. You will not pray. You will not ask God. In fact, you, you want to help God do the thing. I will not help God. Because God does not need your help. He does not need the help of any man to be the God that he already is. You just need to wait patiently and allow him. Some people, God gives them a promise. They have waited and waited and waited and waited. Say, me, I can't wait again, no. I told you the story of that woman. God gave her a promise that she was going to have a son on her 10th wedding anniversary, which was like one year from when she got the promise. But she didn't even wait for the anniversary to come and go, and she didn't get pregnant before helping God. And unknown to her, a few months, three months after the promise, I mean, a few months after the promise, a few weeks or so, no, a few weeks after the, after the confirmation of the promise, the mother came and brainwashed her. She followed, go to one juju priest, and she's a Christian. Her husband was, even the husband was the one that was solidly strong that nothing there happened, they will have that child. She went there because she wanted to help God. 
And God has promised me that I will be child, but I come. And unfortunately for her, the shrine she went to was a demonic, heavily demonic one. And the devil himself oppressed her. The devil told, told, uh, told the, 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 the woman, the worshiper there, say that woman coming is from the other religion. That woman coming is all, see, by the time, oh my God, this is what happens when we try to, to help God bring his promises and plans to fulfillment in our own life. This, 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 this woman went there and she went to the place and then the devil came and told the place, the owner of the place. And when she entered there, she saw symbols of snakes and all this nonsense. That should have been a warning sign for her to run away. She entered and the devil was saying that woman is already pregnant. So which means she was already carrying her blessing in her womb. She was already carrying that son, a prophet in her womb. She was already carrying a prophet in her womb, which is the child of promise. But because of impatience and wanting to help God, she went to a demonic agent for a child because she was so desperate. And meanwhile, she was already pregnant or because she was so anxious, she did not even realize she was pregnant. She went with the pregnancy to a shrine to come and meet for them to give her a child. What did they do? They aborted the baby for her. God's promised child for her. Not only that they took her womb to make sure she doesn't get pregnant anymore. And then the devil came and said, that woman, there is a woman, that woman among them coming. Say, that woman is carrying a prophet in her womb. Ah, we cannot allow that prophet to be born. If they give birth to that prophet, that prophet, and then the devil showed like a screen, showed the woman, the, the juju priestess, uh, the voodoo priestess, a screen of what that prophet, the child in her womb will become. My dear, the devil knows you even in your mother's womb. He knows you. He knows it. Just as God said, why you were yet water and blood in your mother's womb, I knew you. It is the same way God knows you from your mother's womb. It is the same way the devil knows you from your mother's womb. So they know that you are a child of destiny. They know that, hey, if not for that sickness, you will be going on mission trips. You will be sponsoring that. Even said the sickness is not stopping you. You are still doing what God wants you to do. They know that you will be setting their captives free. They know it. Listen, when the devil knows you are a carrier of grace, power and anointing, they will seek to destroy you. The devil knows me from my mother's womb. That is why they try to kill me from my mother's womb. As a teenager, several times. They know you very well. Who? Wow. And that was how the devil told this uh, juju priestess. We must not give this woman poison to abort that baby. She must not give birth to that child. That child is a terror to our kingdom. And so she came. Uh, I'm looking for the fruit of the woman. Why this woman was pregnant without knowing it. And the, dev, the demons, other women coming from the fruit of the womb. The, there's a particular white water they were giving them to drink. When it got to her tongue, she went to the inner chamber to bring a different kind of water. She gave her poison. She drank it. Drank it. Concussion that she doesn't know where it, what is inside. And by the time she came outside the place, she began to bleed. From that place, she landed in the hospital. They had to do evacuation, sharp, sharp. Apart from the evacuation, they even had to remove her womb completely to save her life. You see how people kill the plan of God for them? Because they want to help God. And that is even in a movie. I said it before about one of my sister's friends. Who was looking for the fruit of the womb. And was trying to help God. Instead of waiting for God's timing. Was going from shrine to shrine. Shrine to shrine. Prophet to prophet. Uh, this one to this one. Drinking all manner of nonsense. Drinking concussions of all type. And then she became sick. And her stomach was rotting. Her stomach began to decay. Her stomach began to decay. By the time they took her to the hospital, did x-ray, they saw that there was nothing they could do for her. On the concussion she has been drinking over the years has uh, infected her stomach. And so they began to decay. All the intestines began to decay. There was nothing they could do. And that was how she died. Now she has died and left the marriage. The man by now would have, been remar would have remarried. When gets full grant, 
But now, is it not better for her to have be alive without a child than now that she has sent herself to early grave? A lady in her 30s. In her 30s, so it's not that she's not in her 60s where she can't have child again. It's not that she's already in her 50s. She's still in her 30s. Eh? When people are giving birth at 51. People are giving birth at 55. Even 60 are giving birth. There is a testimony of a woman and her husband. They had they gave their birth to their first son, Abby Twins, at the age of 65. Six, not, be, not 55, oh, 65. Don't help God. It will always backfire. Do not help God to do nothing. Uh, God has promised me a husband. So now you just pray. A brother comes, even though he's in your church, you refuse to pray about it because you are desperate. You just jump and marry. After marrying, just like Dr. Paul and Nature preached that uh, he was sharing the testimony of two couples like that, that uh, they met each other in the church. My dear, it is the devil now goes to church. He disguises and goes to church to hurt people. That everybody is in church is in church doesn't mean that they are saved or born again. Check their characters. Be open. Don't be blinded by love. They say love is blind. If love is blind, how will you see road? Eh? Love is blind. You are walking and you, you will just fall inside a dish. Better open your eye and let your own love be, be uh, blind. What is the opposite of blind? Let your own love have sight, eyes to see. Open your eye. Shine your eye very, very well. It is better for you to be single than for you to get married in a rush. And then after marriage, you become a punchy bag. St uh, stress release. I'll be stress relief for the man. Any small thing goes on your face. Any little thing goes on left and right. Why? Because you didn't wait. Eh? A sister was, uh, 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 I was talking to one sister. She said, oh, my marriage is in trouble. Oh, my ma how long have you been married? Oh, that two years. I've been two and a half for three years. Not, not above three years. I said, how come? Did you not cut dates before you got married? Oh, we dated for two months. Is two months enough to know somebody? Oh, we cut it for three months. I think three, or two or three months, and then we got married straight away. That was too, too hasty. Two months courtship. How can you court somebody? Court courtship for two months. Even in that two months, you'll be seeing warning, warning signs. Some people say, hey, those warning, God warned me. Oh, I saw these signs. Ah, I saw these signs. Oh, I didn't pay attention. Why? Because you are carried away. Carried away. Don't be carried away, my dear. Hey. I am saying it to, I will not join you to pray hot prayer. I will not join you to pray hot prayer. Oh. Eh? I will not join you to pray hot prayer when you have made blunder. So better don't make the blunder. Wait on God. You go and marry eh, 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 Satan's incarnate agent of darkness that they will frustrate your life and your glory, frustrate your star and your destiny, terminate your peace and your joy. Don't need that. You don't need that. Your peace is much more the joy of the Lord is higher than anything. Seek to, to, to please him. Seek to obey. Seek to live in his will. Seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The Bible says every other thing will be added to you. See, it backfired because Abraham tried to help God. The man said, carry your wife, carry everything that is yours, all your property. Make sure you don't forget anyone. Even if you even have a brush, toothpaste, carry all. Even your toothpick, carry everything that is yours and live. That is how this marriage, when you force yourself into it, within five years, you'll be, you'll be told, pack out of my house. I don't want you anymore. Hmm. Hey. Better be patient. Allow God guide you. Allow God show you where he wants you to go what he wants you to wants you to do it's very important praise the lord i pray i pray i pray i pray that god will help us to learn all these lessons that is why most times when you are don't just listen thank god the video will be here so always come back and watch this is a powerful message insight into the the the, the early life of of, of 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 our father abraham remember that you are connected to that blessing
I remember what I said that if you are a carrier of destiny, every one of us, God knows you. Jeremiah, is it 29? He said, why you were yet water and blood in your mother's womb? I already know you. Just the same way, why you were yet water and blood in your mother's womb, the devil already knows you. He will fight to destroy you when you are a danger to him. I told you guys, I was born at almost 16 months, I'll be 15 months, in my mother's womb. 14 months and uh, plus, 15 months plus, almost 15 months. People are giving birth at 9 months. My mother gave birth at almost, they say just 2 days. 2 days to complete 1 month. And let me just even call it 15 months. It's just two days. And it was with divine intervention. Because those witches in our family wanted to kill her with her pregnancy. Now I know why. <laughs> that time I didn't know. When they were telling me the story, I was laughing like, why, why, why is it so important about me? Now I understand why that I am a danger to their kingdom. They knew that God would ask me to build orphanage. They knew that God would, I would do a lot for the kingdom of God. Just as they know you will do a lot for the kingdom of God. Some of you here are born to be financiers of such kingdom, kingdom business. God has put resources in your hand or he will put resources in your hand so that you will use it for his kingdom. Take care of his kingdom. <laughs> the devil knows it. So he is using sickness to steal that resources from your hand. He is using sickness. So he will not succeed. He's using ma your marital life, maybe frustration in your marriage, to quench your destiny. He will not succeed. You are born for a purpose. Everybody type it. I am born with purpose and for a purpose. Not even for one purpose. Purposes. I am born with purpose and for purpose. I am born with and for purposes. Hey, hey Makatala. That is why the devil doesn't like you. That is why he's always attacking you. That is why he's trying to frustrate your life. Because he knows that you, if he doesn't, that's why he's trying to frustrate. He, oh my God. He's been trying. My mother had two boys before me. They killed them mysteriously. My mother got pregnant with me. Now they wanted to kill my mother with the pregnancy. They tied the womb spiritually so that my mother would die. This is how you say, oh, that woman was pregnant. Oh, she died with the pregnancy. Oh, she died when she was giving birth. Enemies. Wickedness of the wicked. May we never be their victims in Jesus' name. That is why you need to pray. They know that maybe that your husband you will marry. Your husband, maybe your husband is even a pastor. There is a sister, one of my followers. She's now married. She's now married. But do you know? <sighs> they say they changed her destiny. Uh, and the man she's married to now, maybe it's, I don't think the man is a born again Christian. But this, like during deliverance, we were told that she was supposed to marry a pastor. Hi. You see how this devil can change people's destiny? Maybe we'll pray that prayer before we go tonight. We've, we'll finish our scripture. I'm just giving you examples. See, when we say we want to treat about Abraham series, you'll be thinking that, uh, oh, we're just going to... But look at the lessons, life lessons coming out for us. Look at the lessons coming out. Look at the lessons coming out. I was told, no, during the, the deliverance video is on, is on this platform. I, I'm, I don't know if I can locate it. We have a lot of deliverance videos. I'm going to try to separate all the deliverance video, but it's going to take me time. So that it's easy for us to say deliverance, we can go. I am born for a purpose and with a purpose. And with purposes. The devil said when, when we were praying, when we were, uh, I was praying for her during her deliverance. The devil said she was, this woman was supposed to be married to a pastor. Her destiny was to be married. I'm not talking about movie now. I am not talking about what somebody told me. It is here with us. Those of you that was here, I think it was last year, that deliverance, Kedibon. And the demon said that this woman, her husband was, she was supposed to be married to a pastor. They say, but we don't want her to be married to a pastor because if she gets married to a pastor, our kingdom will be in trouble. So what did they do? I said, okay, what did you do? Oh, we made the pastor go and impregnate one girl. And the girl is their agent. 
Imagine that self control is very important. Say we made the pastor to impregnate one girl. Maybe pastor went to go and fornicate with this girl. Maybe made the mistake, and and they were the one that even sent the girl to him, without him knowing. They sent an agent to him, without him knowing, and then before you know it, say, maybe the, maybe the girl self is the one that seduced him. Who knows? And the next thing, she was pregnant. <laughs> when the girl got pregnant, she went to go to her parents. They came, they said, Pastor, you must marry this girl. By fire, by po fo po uh, force. That is how Pastor married the girl. And she, he was already engaged to this other, my follower. He was already engaged to her. And that was how they scattered their marriage. That was how they scattered their relationship. That's how they scattered the marriage. And devil was, I mean, the pastor now married to another wife that was given to him from the from these wicked people. And that woman is not his wife of destiny. The woman is not, he, this lady was supposed to be the wife from heaven. But the lady told her to go marry somebody else. Pastor married somebody else. See how they have they separated them. Because they know that if they join force together, their kingdom will be in trouble. You are not an accident. That is why they are fighting you. So that is why you two will tell the devil, whether you fight me, be fighting me. Why? The more you fight me, the more we promote the work of God. <laughs> the more we fulfill my purpose, as long as I am still breathing. And when God sees your heart, he will surely intervene. You will one day do whatever it is that God has ordained for you to do. You are not an accident. We are not accident at all. You are not a mistake. You are here. God deposited you here on this planet for a purpose. I am not an accident. Good evening. You are welcome. I am born with a purpose. I am born for a purpose or for purposes. And I must fulfill them. The devil know they have lost over me. Till today they still attack me. But the fact is that when they attack me, they, it's a waste of time to attack me now. Because now I'm on fire. Now I know how to fight back. When they attack me, me too, I attack them. They don't give up. These witches never give up. With all the fire I carry, they still try me. Several times they have come to, they came to kill me. That killing that they wanted to kill me in my mother's womb. That they couldn't. They still try now. The devil will not give up on you. Because you are a threat to their kingdom. So that is why you must hold tight to God. That is why you must hold firm to God. Hey, that is why you will love God no matter what. No matter what they throw at you. Say no. Abraham was faced with challenges. But in all, Abraham, the Bible calls Abraham the father of faith. The father of faith. Believing that the devil cannot kill you. They cannot. They have no power over your life. You just focus on loving God. You just focus on obeying him. You just focus on doing his will. Forget the rest and leave it for God. If a man's ways pleases the Lord, he said he will cause his enemies to be at peace with him. My dear, there are some enemies that they will never be at peace with you. Especially those witches and wizards. All these demons. Agents of darkness. The devil. He doesn't give up. But like your normal enemies on a regular basis. All those ones will be at peace with you. But all these wicked ones. That are on assignment. To destroy you. Eh? They're fighting you. You just make sure that your ways are right with God. You just make sure that you are living right for God. You just make sure that you are living in obedience to the word of God. Don't be a, a microwave Christian. There are many microwave Christians. So two minutes, just come. Your prayer don't last 10 minutes. You finish praying. Your prayer don't, your Bible study don't last 10 minutes. In fact, you don't even read your Bible. It's only when you come online, you go to church, you hear the word of God. You don't have time to spend quality time with God. 
you see us carry fire you see us carry anointing it is because we know how to connect to the presence of god it is in, I was in his presence there is fullness of joy abraham was constantly connecting to god he was constantly building altars for god he was constantly worshiping god he was constantly lover. He's a lover of God. Abraham, you see, Dana, he was a titer. He was a prayer warrior. He was all. Hey, he passed every test that God will give to him. We are going to read all this and see Abraham series. But look at only series one now. Look at look at live lessons. Look how it's coming up. So you must not miss this series because God is going to be teaching us deep, deep things about Abraham, that we can apply to our own lives. Look at the ones we have learned today. Plenty, plenty. Go back and watch this video again. Go back and watch it again. Listen again. It's too loaded. And if you came late, go back and watch from the beginning. It is too powerful. Very powerful. Praise the Lord. Ha. You are too important to be ignored by the devil. <laughs> if the devil is not bothered about you, that means there is something wrong with you. <laughs> that you know it. If the devil is not concerned about you, that means something is wrong. Oh. You are too important, too valuable to the kingdom of God for the devil to ignore you. Because he knows you carry so much destiny. You are a threat to his kingdom. Ha. Don't you know something? There was one deliverance I did here. And the devil said, oh, there was that sister in Jamaica. The devil said, oh, she doesn't want, they don't want the sister to be connected to me. He said, because, I said, why? He said, because she's like me. She loves orphans like me. She, oh, I wish I can find that video. So I will crop it out. I will crop it out so you can listen to that that part say this is how say then me i want to me I, the devil will say say me i'll be soon i'll be going and i'll be this was like last year i'll be doing charity work i'll be feeding the orphans and the widows i say so what they say no they they, they don't want say, say they don't like it when we feed with uh, orphans they don't like it when we take care of the devil the devil does not like it when you take care of the widows and orphans and i will say why he said because it opens door it brings blessings and we don't want people to be blessed so we don't want them to be feeding orphans we don't want them to be feeding widows i was like wow we don't want them to be feeding orphans oh i wish i can find that deliverance I wish I can find it. I wish I can find it and, pl and play it for you. Maybe just that part. I will just crop it. Maybe I will see if I can find it. I, I have too many deliverance videos. Uh, uh, uh. Oh. <laughs> Rabba shaka ya rabo si ya rabba. Onishe. Iyano. Hmm. We have so many deliverance. And they say no. That is why we don't want. We don't want. We don't listen. The devil knows it. The devil knows it that you are too important. You are important. Very important. Very, very important. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Ah, the name is just dead. Ah, what is her name? The name is just bouncing in my head and I'm just forgetting. I can't remember the name of the game. I'm trying to see if I can find it. You are very important. Don't worry about what is going on in your life. God will fix it. He will fix you. He will take care of you. It is for self-examination. Do you still comfortably tell lies and it is like nothing happens? Are you still comfortable with lies? Are you still comfortable with whatever? You know, are you still living in sin? Are you still fornicating adultery? Are you still stealing, cheating? Are you still uh, robbing? Are you uh, disobedient to the word of God? Are you having malice, hatred, whatever? I begin to ask God for forgiveness now. Begin to repent. Begin to repent. Ask God for mercy. 
Begin to ask God for mercy. Repent. Begin to repent. In ask God for mercy. Ask him for mercy. Say, Lord, show me mercy. Lord, show me mercy. Oh, my carabas kende in the bush. Lord, show me mercy. Oh, Lord, show me mercy. Ask the Lord for mercy. Ask God for mercy. Ask him for mercy. Ask him for mercy. Ask him for mercy. Ask him for mercy. Ask God for mercy. Lord, show me mercy. Oh, Rikalabashike Rabas. Show me mercy, Lord. Show me mercy, Lord. Show me mercy, Lord. Show me mercy, Lord. Oh, Rikatala dos Kende Rabash. Ye calabos kende rigadabas in the rebush. Show me mercy, show me mercy. Show me mercy, show me mercy, Lord. Show me mercy, O God. Masa katala dos kende rabash. Rabagados kente rikatala dos yaraba. Reprakata ta 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 ta. Os kende ligalagados kende rabash. Oh, Rika ta 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 Ask God for mercy. If you know your ways are not right with God, begin to repent now. Your ways need to be right with God so that you can fully come into his promises. Remember that the prayer of a sinner is an abomination unto the Lord. So God doesn't hear you. God doesn't hear you at all. Ye kalabashike alabasinte debus. Ask God for mercy. Ask him for forgiveness. Rikatala dos kende debush. Rabagados kende ligalagadashin de rabash. Oh, maso koto rikalagados yarabas. If you know your ways are not right, you are still telling small, small lies. Or big, big lies or lies. Lies is lies, oh. Repent. Ask God for mercy. Ask God for mercy. You are disobedient to the word of God. Ask God for mercy. If you are still disobedient to his ways, ask him for mercy. Mashaka talados kende bush. Libragados kende yarabashinde yarabas. Ask him mercy. Ask for his mercies. Oh, Father, show me mercy. Forgive me my trespasses, O oh God. You know yourself. You know areas that you have faulted. Ask him. He's a merciful father. Look at Abraham. He showed Abraham mercy despite his errors, despite his mistakes. That same God is here to show you mercy. Lord, show me mercy. Lord, show me mercy. Lord, show me mercy. Lord, show me mercy. E kalaboshi arabas. Reprakatala dos kende de bush. Oh, she kaira baba 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 si kaira bash. Oh, thank you, Father. Oh, begin to plead the blood of Jesus. Let that blood, Lord, I plead your blood over my life. Let that blood that you shed on the cross begin to cleanse me, flush, purify and sanctify me in the name of Jesus, Lord. Purify me, sanctify me with your blood, O oh God. Purify and sanctify me with your blood, O oh God. Purify and sanctify me with your blood, O oh God. Purify and sanctify me with your blood, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lekharaboshin, Dayanabas. 
O mas kondori galagada ba ye kete tete bagada usia da bash. Thank you El Shaddai. Thank you King of Glory. May your name be praised. May your name be glorified. May your name be lifted up in the name of Jesus. Mason tori kaya gada balinde yada bash. Thank you Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you. I just heard the song. We told in nothing. We told in nothing. I surrender all to you, Jesus. Everything, Lord, I give unto you. We told in nothing. We told in nothing. I give myself away. Oh Lord, I give myself away. So you, you can use me, Lord. I give myself away. Oh Lord, I give myself away so you, you can use me, Lord. I give myself away. If you are ready to give yourself away, God is ever ready to use you. If you are ready to live sacrificially for Him, God is ever ready to use you. If you are ready to let go, God is ever ready to use you. It is not easy. He said when a mother molds a pot, he makes use of it. Molding a pot is not an easy process. But any pot that refuses to be molded cannot be useful. Ha! Ah, any pot that refuses to be molded cannot be useful. Will you allow God mold you? Will you allow God shape on you? And will you allow him prepare you for his use? Are you willing to let go of everything you hold dear? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. If you are too in love with yourself, you cannot be useful to God. If you are not willing to sacrifice, you cannot be useful to God. I know what ministry is costing me. I've been, I've been working all day, for example. I just came back from work. Did one or two things. Tried to sort one thing or the other. And I am here online. For how many hours now preaching. And this woman of God is working tomorrow as well. That notwithstanding. See how I'm relaxed. I'm not even rushing off. I'm not even in a rush to say, oh, let me quickly finish. So that I will run to go and sleep. I am not even in a rush to just go and sleep. Because I'm not led yet to go. I'm just being sensitive. It costs. It costs a lot to serve God. That is why many fall by the wayside. But are you that one? I cry every day, Lord, I give myself away, completely away to you, to be used by you. Are you willing? Are you ready to let yourself go for the master's use? Are you ready? Are you ready to let go of your own desires, of your own needs and wants for you to say, Lord, here I am. Use me, Lord, here I am. Send me, Lord, here I am. Touch me, Lord, for you. I don't know where that song came from. Oh, I've never sang it before. I just heard it now in my spirit. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Use me. Fill me. 
God says he's looking for a man that will stand in the gap. See, there are so many. The harvest indeed is ripe, but there is no laborers. The laborers are few. Even the ones that are there, they have no, they are not even chasing after the heart of God. They are busy chasing after their own needs. They are there pursuing their own desires, their own needs. Makarabashi keyarabas. Libra gados kende yarabash. Riprakatos kende yarabashi katatata. Oh, Saint Heragados Kende Yarabash. Lord, I surrender all to you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Say, Lord, I'm available. I am available for you, Jesus. Do whatever you want with me. Do whatever you want with me, Lord. Do whatever you want with me, Jesus. Father, do whatever you want with me. In the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord for grace to be faithful. Grace to live in obedience. Grace to do his will. Grace to obey him. Grace to obey. Grace to obey him. Grace to love him. Without reserve. Grace to live in obedience. Thank you, Daddy God. Father, we just bless you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word, O oh God. Help us to live in obedience to your word. Help us to live in obedience to you, Jesus. Oh, rapakute rika labas kende yadabash. Iprakatos kende ligalagados kende yadabash. Help us, Lord, to live in obedience. I have mercy on us, O God. Show us mercy. Heal us from every sicknesses, pain, and diseases. Deliver us from every evil stronghold, to God. Let our lives be used for your glory. Your grace is more than enough for us, Jesus. Your grace is enough for us. Father, we connect to that grace. Lord, we connect to that grace, oh God. Oh, we connect to that grace, Father. We connect to that grace, oh God. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way in our lives. Have your way. Ah, have your way, Lord. Have your way. Oh. have your way in us. We yield to you. We submit to you. We surrender to you, Lord. Have your way, Jesus. Let our lives be used for your glory. Let our lives be used for your honor. Let our lives be used for your worship. In the name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We cover ourselves in your blood. May your name be praised forever. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless all of you. See you. Mm, I don't know about tomorrow. I will see if I can come briefly tomorrow. If I'm not able to come tomorrow, then it will be on Sunday. Because I have a meeting at 5. With I mean, not 5, at 7 with my team. But if I'm able to squeeze in before that at, before that 7, I will see. If I, come for, if I can come from like... 4.35 to we'll see what happens because I'm working tomorrow come back and see if I can jump on and if not and then anyway his grace is enough so by his grace I probably will see you tomorrow God bless you all thanks for watching it is well with you make sure you live in obedience to the word of God share this broadcast because it is powerful host watch parties again listen to it again from the beginning 
and make sure it ministers to you. Break out of your life. Anything that does not glorify God. God bless you all. Have a wonderful night rest. I love you guys. Bye-bye.